1932, a movie emerged that deeply affected audiences with its portrayal of ancient Rome. It tells a gripping story filled with politics, love, and tough decisions. Throughout the film, viewers experience a range of emotions from surprise to heartbreak. What makes this movie special are the unexpected moments that keep people hooked. Its themes of love and sacrifice, along with the talented cast, make it unforgettable. The movie continues to connect with audiences even years after its release. Do you have a special memory associated with this film? Whether it's watching it with loved ones or discovering it for the first time, many people hold dear memories connected to it. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more interesting facts about the film and join the conversation about your own experiences with this classic movie. Cecil B. Demel's 1932 film, The Sign of the Cross, showcases his talent for extravagant productions. It's set in ancient Rome, portraying a world of luxury and religious passion. The movie follows Marcus Superbus, a Roman prefect known for his wild lifestyle who falls for Mercia, a virtuous Christian woman. As Marcus struggles with his desires against Mercia's faith, tensions rise under Emperor Nero's rule. Demel, drawing from his background in theater, fills the film with grandeur and sensuality. The stark difference between Rome's opulence and the Christian's purity is vividly shown with scenes swinging between indulgence and devotion. Key performances like Charles Lawton's portrayal of Nero deepen the story. Lawton's portrayal, marked by his mannerisms, offers a nuanced view of power and longing. While the sign of the cross may feel outdated to modern viewers due to its exploration of controversial themes like homosexuality and religious persecution, it reflects the filmmaking freedom of its time. Looking back, while Demel's film may not connect as strongly today, its historical importance and skilled filmmaking are undeniable. It stands as a significant work in Demel's career, highlighting his love for spectacle and storytelling. The Sign of the Cross, released in 1932, holds historical significance not just as a film but also for its cast members. One notable actor, John Carradine, who didn't feature in the movie, was considered for the role of Big Daddy in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof by writer Tennessee Williams. Despite other commitments, Carradine eventually took on the role in a 1977 Los Angeles production. In a different facet of his life, Carradine was acquainted with Reverend Felton H. Griffin, a pioneering Alaskan minister. Griffin, known for founding the Alaska Baptist Convention in the 1940s, shared an avid interest in hunting and fishing. On occasion, he even flew Carradine to his cabin at Coal Lake, Alaska, for weekend retreats. During the filming of Jamaica Inn in 1939, Charles Lawton, a key figure in the sign of the cross, allegedly developed an interest in his teenage co-star Maureen O'Hara. Lawton spoke of wanting to adopt her, but his wife, Elsa Lanchester, dismissed it as a passing whim. Lanchester suggested that O'Hara had exploited Lawton's kindness to further her career. Their strained relationship was evident, with Lanchester expressing her dislike of O'Hara, who, in turn, made her feelings towards Lanchester clear in her memoirs. In conclusion, the cast and crew of The Sign of the Cross had connections that extended beyond the confines of the film set, with actors like John Carradine and Charles Lawton involved in intriguing off-screen stories. The Sign of the Cross is a movie from 1932. It stars an actor who had diverse interests, such as reading, writing poetry, playing the banjo, and playing chess. He was in a long-term relationship with actress Beverly Roberts. In total, he acted alongside his wife Elsa Lanchester in seven films, including The Private Life of Henry Roman VIII, Rembrandt, and Witness for the Prosecution. The Sign of the Cross was directed by Cecil B. Demel and features an ensemble cast. It is known for its lavish production, including elaborate sets and costumes. The movie explores themes of love, betrayal, and religious persecution in ancient Rome. It received mixed reviews upon its release, but has since gained a reputation as a classic of early Hollywood cinema. The Sign of the Cross, a movie from 1932, features a lead actor deeply involved in Irish nationalism, having fought in the Easter Rising of 1916 and later portraying one of its leaders in The Plough and The Stars in 1936. In 1934, Theta Barra expressed confidence in Claudette Colbert's performance in Cleopatra, despite initially not categorizing her as a vampire. The movie shares the honor of having actors Jose Ferrer, Helen Hayes, and Ingrid Bergman as the inaugural winners of Tony Awards for acting in 1947. The film was The Sign of the Cross, directed by Cecil B. Demel, 
came out in 1932, following two earlier biblical films by him. Diana Jamora, whose father had a significant role, starred in the movie. In 1944, a prologue was added to enhance its appeal to audiences completed on March 25th at a high cost. This film is a notable addition to Demel's biblical-themed works showcasing his storytelling skills on screen. The Sign of the Cross, a film from 1932, boasts a cast with roots in performance. Its lead, Frederick March, delayed filming for a week to complete another project. Charles Lawton, fresh from Island of Lost Souls, found inspiration for his character in an unlikely place his dentist. His role required the use of a whip, a skill he had already mastered from a street performer. Directed by Cecil B. Demel, this historical drama brings ancient Rome to life on the silver screen. The Sign of the Cross, released in 1932, is a movie with historical significance. The father of one of its actors, Hugh M. Middleton, served in the Confederate States Army during the American Civil War. Charles Lawton, another actor in the film, was initially cast in a different role for a later movie, but left after two days due to discomfort with his character's portrayal. Following his acting career, Lawton transitioned to television writing under the pseudonym David Barclay. The Sign of the Cross remains notable for its portrayal of ancient Rome and its impact on early cinematic history. In 1932, a historical epic film was released, directed by Cecil B. Demel. It tells the story of ancient Rome, Christianity, and persecution. The movie stars Frederick March, Claudette Colbert, Elissa Landy, and Charles Lawton. March plays a Roman official torn between his duty and his sympathy for Christians, while Colbert portrays a Christian woman who captures his heart. The film follows the persecution of Christians under Emperor Nero's rule, featuring grand sets and dramatic scenes of gladiatorial combat and the burning of Rome. One memorable moment sees Colbert's character bravely facing a hungry lion in the Colosseum rather than renounce her faith. Lawton delivers a chilling performance as the tyrannical Emperor Nero. Despite its controversial themes, the movie received praise for its production values and performances. It remains an important piece of cinema history, influencing later epics and depicting religious persecution. It continues to be studied and appreciated by fans and scholars alike for its cinematic achievements. In summary, it's a captivating portrayal of ancient Rome and early Christianity with themes of faith, persecution, and moral conflict that still resonate today. Actor Robert Gleckler appeared alongside Lon Chaney Jr. in 11 films, including well-known titles like This Is My Affair, Jesse James, and Frontier Marshal. They also worked together on movies such as House of Frankenstein, The Mummy's Ghost, and House of Dracula. Despite criticism from some critics for overacting, his popularity with audiences remained strong. While studying at Columbia University, he joined the Delta Epsilon fraternity, showing his involvement in Greek life during his college years. In summary, Robert Gleckler had a diverse career in film, collaborating with Lon Chaney Jr. on multiple occasions. Despite facing criticism for his acting style, he remained a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. His time at Columbia University also highlights a personal aspect of his life.